What I'm gonna show you here is how to freeze motion in a shot. We've got this beautiful handmade glass, which we're probably gonna sadly smash because it always happens. We've got a couple of lights. It's quite a small set, like I can reach the entire thing. You can set this up in your house. You don't need a studio space. We've got loads of empty space around us, but there's a few things you will notice. First and foremost, we've got the packs way back from the set. We don't want water going into the electrics. And if we just turn this pack on over here, what we'll see on the screen is that we have a very short flash duration. We've gone for eight thousandth of a second. That should be enough for us to freeze the action here. We've also gone for reflectors because at that sort of flash duration, we don't get much power coming out. So we want to make sure all of it is coming in. Now I've got my big boom arm here with my key light and that's where we're going to start. The first frame comes through pretty much black. We've got some video lights on which are letting a bit of ambient in, but, but that's it. When we do the actual shot this time, we'll be turning those video lights off because we can't have any ambient bleed because it will cause motion blur. Now we're talking about T0.1 scores during this test today, and that is how quickly light goes from being there to disappearing. And in Bronkula's case, it is very quick. So this is our first one. We've got our catch lights on the glass. I get loads of questions saying like, how do I get rid of the catch lights? You don't want to get rid of them. You want to place them in the nicest possible way. So we've moved this light off to the side, so we get this beautiful circle in the glass. That's going to help. But this glass here is also fluted. It's got these beautiful like engravings on the back. So we want to get some hard light going through it so we can really see the cuts in the glassware here. So we'll turn another light on in the back. We've gridded this one just so it doesn't create too many additional issues. We don't want it spraying everywhere, but we do want it, one, to catch this bit here, and two, for when we pour the drink to backlight the liquid. There we go, and you can now see the detail that's been bought through there. And this is just an ungraded file at the moment. So, we've got some beautiful alcohol-free stuff that I found in the cupboard that I've not used, and we're going to pour this into the glass and take a shot. Now, usually I'd say bang it out at 10 frames a second, but really, we can't do that on the current cable we've got. So until my new tether cables come through, this is gonna be a one-shot bonanza. It's gonna be like shooting four by five film, and we're just gonna to have to hope we get the frame. That went well. Right, I'm gonna get Rob now to come and give me a hand pouring this because I can only do one bit at a time, I think. Well, maybe I can double do it. I think I can double do it, Rob, hang on. I think I'm good. I think you can B-roll it. Do you want to come around that side? And then get the B-roll in. Ah, oh, we need to turn the house lights off. So, house lights off, first of all. It's going to get very dark in a minute. It's going to be very moody. There we go. Now, I don't think we need to turn the modelling lights off, but we'll find out on this first go. So, first thing, I'm going to get this bottle as close as I can, raise it up, Start pouring. Stop for a second. Let's check that. Beautiful. We're gonna do another pour to fill it up. And we'll do one last one just to get the effervescence fizz coming off the top of the glass here. And do you know what? I want a spillage one as well. Oh, a bit more. Perfect. You know, let's get a few of these until we get the perfect combination. And often what we end up doing is taking a pour from one part and the splash from another just do one more whilst we've already made a good mess. I 
We're trying to build up this bank now of back plates because nothing here is moving. We can start to pull splashes from various frames. That's quite exciting on the side there. Nice, we've got some beautiful splashes going on now. One last go. A tiny bit left. No, not enough. There we go. So we've got the shot. So we've got the shots now. We've got all the back plates. Obviously, on a normal shoot, we'd have 50 bottles of this. We do this over and over again. Paper comes out, we bin it, fresh paper in, the whole shebang. But this is just to show you the principles of this. I'm going to grab them up, clean this up, go through to the computer, get the edit going. Right then, let's uh, try not to kill myself. <laughs>